to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Kickstart that engine and roll thunder with the pack. Explore the grittiness of masculine spirituality. Gain traction in the virtues. And soup up your spiritual engine by turning adversity into adventure. Now, here's Bear Wozniak. Let's ride. Aloha and welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. You're invited to participate with us, my new my adventure guide. Uh, this show is going to be Gary Zemak. But before we get started, I want to I want to talk with you about something, and that is this the 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 beauty and the wonder of nature. When you look at have you ever looked at a butterfly real, real close in the early morning dew, and you see that little fragile drop of dew on that butterfly's wing? God knows about that. God ordained that. Every drop of dew on a butterfly's wing, every breath that you breathe, God has ordained. God knows you. God knows all the hair on your head and the, the fact that you have fewer now than before, possibly, for some of us. And uh, he knows you. He knows you, cares about you, loves you. He knows you more than you know yourself. Even people who are conceived in the worst situations, maybe an unwanted child or even in rape, that may have been a mistake on the part of the human beings. They may have considered a mistake or even a tragedy, but God didn't because God, at that moment of conception, chose for you to be infused, your spiritual, rational soul, to be fused into that human uh, flesh, and you became you. And God made you. God created your nature. He created the way you feel. He created kind of that intrinsic way that you are. Some people are more type A. Some people are more creative. Some people you know, have all these different dispositions. God made you in a very, very, very unique way. But also, he made you in his image and likeness. And you're to, you're to, you're to reflect him. You're to, show, uh, you're, you're, you're to show his beauty and the wonder and the truth of God in the in who you are and the way you live. So don't become disheartened if you feel like you've been put on a shelf someplace or you don't feel you're worthy or you don't feel you fit in. Congratulations. Uh, misfits are, the, are, are exactly who God is looking for. He's looking for those people that don't fit in so well to the way the world runs but fit in perfectly into the body of Christ. And I have a friend of mine, Gary Zemak, that I've watched him and his family, his wife and his two daughters. I've watched this man walk a walk of being as faithful and as cl clearly walk the path that God has had for him uh, by, by anybody that I know. And it's, had, it's, been, it's been full of challenges, and it's been beautiful because I've seen him walk in humility and grow in strength. So we have with us today a friend that's been on our show many times. I've been on his show, Gary Zemak. Aloha, Gary. Welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Thank you, my brother. It is always a pleasure to be with you. And thanks for what you said. I really appreciate it. You know, as you know, my friend, though, this walk is it's difficult. It's challenging sometimes. But the secret is is humility. Right. We and as a controlling type person, you know me, Bear, I'm a bit of a control freak type A person. I like to do things. It's hard for me to surrender my life to the Lord. But that's what he wants. And I'll, I'm working on that one day at a time. But that 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 virtue that you have of controlling things yeah. properly, properly, humbly used by the Lord is yeah. so important in what you do. Right. Because one thing you don't do is you're not a flake. Right. You follow right. through. Yep. And that's the thing. I'm passionate, Bear. And I'm passionate about the Lord because he's been so good to me. And I loved what you said at the start of the show, because I think we forget that sometimes we we forget that when we look at nature, when we look at so many things that we ignore oftentimes, we see God in nature, in the littlest things. And, you know, every time, let me just share something with you. Every time, you know me, I'm an anxious person by nature. Every time I hear the birds chirp, I remember the words of the Lord talking about, if your heavenly father cares about the birds, he's going to care about you. And when I hear the birds, Bear, I'm reminded, hey, Gary, relax. The Lord loves you. You know, I remember going through a very, very challenging time in my life uh, about 12, 15 years ago, mm -hmm. everything in my life was melting down for the second yeah. time. It seemed like mm. I was in tremendous financial duress and uh, 
and I was working day and night trying to keep my word and fulfill agreements and things like that. Yeah. And just exhausted. And I remember I would walk out of my house in Hawaii, in Waikiki, you know, horrible place to be. Yeah. I would I would look up at, I would look up at the palm trees. Yeah. And I'd see the trade winds blowing. And it caused me to look up a little bit higher and know that the Lord was with me. Uh, but it really is in those times of feeling the most vulnerable that we can feel that sense of closest to God. And it, and it takes those times uh, of strong men being broken. You know, blessed is mm-hmm. the man who mm-hmm. falls on the rock, for he will be broken. But woe to him yeah. who the rock falls, for he will be crushed. There's a certain brokenness that the Lord is looking for in yeah. the soul of a Christian. What, what, what are your reflections on that? I agree, because when we're broken, and you know, Bear, a lot of times we will fool ourselves and say, and make a deal with the Lord and say, Lord, if you take these problems away, if you give me a smooth sailing, no problems in my life, I'm going to worship you all the time. I'm going to be in a great mood. Everything will be wonderful. We'll be good friends. But the Lord knows us better than that. He knows that we pray more earnestly when we are broken, when we are suffering, when we are going through the hard times. That's when we turn to him the most. So as much as I wouldn't like to admit that, as much as I try to to bargain with the Lord and kind of fool him, saying, Lord, take these problems away. I'm going to be so much more effective as one of your followers. He knows better. And he realizes that when we're struggling, when we're suffering, when we admit our brokenness, when we surrender and say, Lord, I can't do this. I'm too weak. That's when we can follow him the best. And that's when he can use us as his instruments. It's interesting how every man of God you see in the Old Testament or even the New Testament, they had that detour. Yes. You know, when they when you look at, for example, Joseph was supposed mm-hmm. to be this, he had a vision of being this great king, and then he ends up in the prison at Potiphar's jail. Yeah. Um, you look at um, Elijah, after his great victory, he goes out into the desert, probably by Mount Sinai, where Moses received the Ten Commandments, and he's just hiding out there, just kind of depressed and... You know, like, God, what did you do wrong? You know, mm-hmm. <laughs> and, then, mm-hmm. and even, you know, G- Jesus had his time, you know, his, his 40 days in the wilderness, uh, fasting and praying and being tempted uh, by Satan. And think about Paul after he, his uh-huh. conversion experience. He went out into Arabia for three, three years. Yeah. Um, yeah. Time after time after time, when you see uh, the way God works in a person's life, there is this detour. Yep. And, and, yep. and a lot of people might be in that detour right now. Do you remember that book, Hind's Feet in High Places by Catherine Hunyard? I don't know that one. Well, it's, it's the book was written for you. It's a beautiful book. It's an allegory, Hind's Feet in High Places, where Much Afraid lives in the valley of the shadow of death. Wow. And uh, Much Afraid is invited by the shepherd to go up into the heights with him. Mm-hmm. And all of her neighbors say, you can't do it, you can't do it. But she heads out uh, to go up into the high places uh, so that she could have feet like a hind's feet. And she ends up taking this detour into the desert, and her, fr- and her companions, I think, are sorrow and suffering. Wow. Talked about people, and we're going to take another segment to, to, to talk a little bit more about this, but introduce the subject of people that are in the detour, that it seems like life didn't go the way that they thought it would go. <laughs> you know, Bear, I just want to follow up on something you said. I, that's a great point. He talked about St. Paul. Now, here's a guy who wanted to go to Rome. He wanted to preach in Rome. And, of course, we all know he ended up in Rome, but not in the way he expected. He ended up imprisoned in Rome. And look at how the Lord used St. Paul, right? We still are inspired by his writings today. He inspired so many people. If we'll just go along with God's plan for each one of us, it's a perfect plan. And that involves surrender. I believe it involves daily surrender. And if he has you in a circumstance circumstances that you might not like, he has you there for a reason, especially if you can't get out of it. A lot of people are stuck in jobs that they just can't stand. I'm not saying we don't look for new jobs. I'm not saying that we don't explore opportunities. There comes a time when the Lord has you in a situation that you can't get out of. Well, at that point, it's his will for you. And if you just go along with it and say, Lord, use me, why do you have me here? Why am I suffering? Why do I have this illness? Why did I lose my job? Why are things not working out for me? I think we get, we'll get surprised 
and he'll give us the answer. You know, bear the prayer that I pray every day is, Lord, I surrender to you today. Use me as your instrument. The ultimate thing is, is you think about Job. You know, oh, yeah. His friends showed up and philosophized. Yeah. He talked, he talked about God as if God wasn't even <laughs> sitting in the room with him, you know? Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, God does this and God does that. And the difference yeah. between Job and Job's friends is that Job got real with God. He spoke to yep. God instead of talking yep. about God. And he said, God, why are you doing <laughs> yeah. this to me? Yeah. This is not right. But because yeah. he got real with God, God got real with him. Exactly. And the biggest issue you're dealing right with right now when you're on this detour is the question of do you trust God, oh, that he yeah. has your best interest in heart. We're talking with Gary Zemeck, the author of the new book, I Gave Up Worry for Lent. Is that how it goes? Give Up Worry for Lent. Yeah, uh, we'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak Adventure and our good friend Gary Zemeck. Aloha and welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. People love our TV series Long Ride Home. Uh, it's a 10 op the ep season one has aired on EWTN several times. It's aired on the Armed Forces Network as well. It's 10 episodes and it's now up on iTunes, Prime Video, Amazon Prime Video, and Google Play. So it's a great opportunity when your friends and family are around this weekend or you know for your or during the holiday season. Just just uh, log into Prime Video on your on your TV or on iTunes and start playing episode one and see if you don't get people's attention. You'll end up power watching the whole thing over a weekend with your family. It's a great show to uh, share with your friends, uh, especially people that would never feel comfortable talking with you about God because this show shows gritty, manly guys riding motorcycles across the United States, confronting a lot of gritty uh, danger and, and spiritual battles. And it's just, it's just very real. And we would love for you to go, and, and, and we, we did this as an evangelistic outreach and also as a call to deeper conversion. So go to iTunes, go to Prime Video, go to Amazon Prime Video, go to Google Play. Um, also go to our website, deepadventure.com. My books, uh, Deep in the Way of a Surfing Guide to the Soul and Deep Adventure the Way of Hero Heroic Virtue are there and available for you there too. Uh, and subscribe to our email because our email, when you subscribe to our email, we send you the radio show, the video, to the YouTube version of it, the video version of it, uh, the morning before it airs on EWTN. And so if you do that, you'll get to see Gary Z. Mack and myself uh, talking right now. You can go to YouTube also and subscribe uh, to our YouTube channel, and that'll get you these videos too. So Gary Z. Mack, uh, I think you and Jason Jones and Mike Aguilina, uh, the three of you are tied for first place for how often I've had you on my show. Wow, I am honored. I'm in some good company there, brother. But it always seems like the Holy Spirit just guides our dialogue. We rarely even yeah. talk about what are we going to talk about. We, that is correct. And Bear, can I just follow up on one thing? You talked yeah. about Job. You talked about trusting God. That is so critical. And the Lord has put me through the ringer. You know my story. There have been months in the past. I've, I was in full-time ministry for close to six years after I left my after I got laid off from my job as a software developer. Uh, now I also work at a parish in addition to speaking and, and writing. But there have been times when I'm looking at the monthly bills and I'm thinking, Lord, what are you doing to me here? You're killing me. How am I going to pay the bills? But he's always come through. And when you talk about Job, Barry, you know what I find interesting? For 37 chapters of the book of Job, Job, as you said, consistently was speaking to the Lord, asking questions, talking to him. The Lord did not speak one word to Job until chapter 38. <laughs> and that right. But when he spoke, he really spoke. But don't pa right. But don't panic if the Lord is silent. A lot of times that he wants that dialogue. He wants us to trust wants us him to press into him. Exactly. And, and I tell people, lay it out. Let him know if you're frustrated with him. Let him know he's not going to get offended. You know, right? I love that. I think it's in chapter 39 when Job. You ever see one of those really gnarly horses, you know, how they, how they, yeah. they're fierce, their nostrils yeah. snorts, their, their, their shoulders quiver. Uh, they, they run headlong into the javelin and the, the spear and they, they hear the roar of the officers and they, and they, and they, and they follow the instructions and they run. But one, I think one of the most beautiful pictures there, I was reading this morning, um, the life of St. Paul, um, yeah. One of the most beautiful images there, where it says his the, the, the horse's mane is covered covers beautiful mane flowing over his neck, 
and I believe it was Stephen said, "You strong-necked people to the to the to the Pharisees and Sadducees before, yeah. when he was about to be stoned." That neck is the image of our will. That strong-necked willfulness, right. Right. or is it going to be like that neck of the horse? Powerful, powerful animal. Yeah. Beautiful mane. Who, if you just do a light touch on the bridle, it responds. When when God paints that image of that powerful horse fiercely approaching the battle, mm-hmm. I think that's the way he wants us men to be. He does. He does. And it all, you know, it's funny, Bear. This is it's it's a difficult topic, especially when we're talking to men, to talk about the idea of surrendering to God's will, because that's not a popular word when it comes to men. We don't like to surrender. We don't like to be in control. But it, it, it's sort of a paradox that the only way the Lord can bring out the power in us, as he did with St. Paul, is when we admit our weakness. And ultimately, I don't care how tough we are. Bear Wozniak, you're a tough guy. There's no doubt about it. But when it comes to God, you're weak. We're all weak, and we have to accept that our strength doesn't come from us. We can only do so much on our own. But like St. Paul, we could say, hey, when I'm weak, then I am strong because the power of God can flow through me. And if you tap into that power, there is no stopping us. But again, the idea of surrendering to God and accepting his will, being able to trust him when we think we know better, that's difficult. Talk about the Old Testament figures. You talked about Abraham, one of my heroes. God said, Abraham, I need you to leave your homeland. And Abraham said, okay. Didn't ask where we were going, but he trusted the Lord. And that's the key, Bear. You know, the thing is, is we think about the image of the horse, too. It's yeah. bred to be powerful. I was up at Archbishop's. Right. Arch, Archbishop Wenske's one of his best friends is Tom Equals, best friend from college. We went up to his thoroughbred horse ranch, up I think near Ocala is where it is. We rode our motorcycles up there and got to film up there and ride horses up there. And, and you, uh, these are thoroughbred horses. Yeah. Their potential is built in. I mean, we're built in as mm. men to right. be powerful, but... Our potential is fully released when we are when we when we have the trainer training us, and yes. when there's someone riding us, uh, we might run too fast, we might run too slow, but they set the pace for us, and then to give us the direction, you know, go this mm-hmm. way, not that way, when to make the pass, when not to make the pass. Those we saw four horses out there were probably worth about a half a million dollars combined, you know, wow. but we're better than that. We are made men are made to be thoroughbred horses. Yeah. We're meant to be powerful, and to be used by God in a powerful way. But to do that, to reach our stride, we need to be in the discipline of the Lord. We need to have his hands on the bridle. The other thing about it is there's a verse there in that same verse that says, he hears the roar of the officers Mm -hmm. shouting, go this way, go that way. We as men, we need to hear the roar of the Catholic catechism. We need to hear the roar of the magisterium of the church. We need to hear St. Thomas Aquinas, Augustine, Athanasius roaring into our ears. This is the way. Follow it. It says that God will be behind you. You will hear a voice behind you yelling. This is the way. Follow it. Why would the voice, that voice need to yell if it weren't for the fact that you were in the midst of a battle? And right. You needed to hear close, clearly. So cling to the Lord. The time of the detour, you'll see us on long ride home. It's when we take the detour, when unexpected things happen, that the best stuff happens. You know, the greatest chance for personal uh, awareness of seeing your own uh, areas where you need to repent and grow, but also the greatest opportunities for ministry. Mm. When you see the detour, when you see that brick wall in front of you, that's the time to glory in your weakness because you're about to see God move. That's the key, brother, that, that detour. I love the concept of the detour. We claim as Christians, to be followers of Christ. We claim to be his disciples until we don't get our way a lot of times. And then we, then we, (laughs) then we, right. It's like, oh, wait a minute, Lord, that's not where we're supposed to go today. That wasn't our plan. That's exactly right. But if we're his followers, and this is the thing, Bear, we hear a lot of people say, I want to know what God's will is for my life. Well, pay attention because every day Jesus says to you, to each one of us, follow me. And through the circumstances in our lives, wherever it may be, in the office, at home, at the store, wherever we are, with our buddies hanging out, the Lord gives us these opportunities. He takes us, he leads us these opportunities to share the good news. But we we have to follow him if we claim to be his followers. You want to know what God's will is? Someone right there right now saying, Lord, what is your will for me? 
for my life to be like Jesus. Yep. That, yep. To be a person of virtue. Yep. If you spend time with the Lord in prayer in the morning, receiving yep. the sacraments, you live in a life of virtue, everything mm. else unfolds. Everything yes. just unfolds. I don't, exactly. When I was a young man, I used to say, Lord, please let me get this job. Lord, please let me get this out. Yeah. Lord, and now I just thought, Lord, please let me do your will. Yeah, yeah. Because when yeah. you're in his will, it may not, it's not, it's not, it's simpler, mm -hmm. but not easy. It's exactly. harder, but it's simpler because you have one heart, one mind, one goal, and that's just to serve him. Yeah. And Bear, you know what? If you, if you have that mindset, Lord, wherever you want me to be, wherever you let me be today, I'm happy because I'm doing your will. You're going to be so much more peaceful because there is nothing that can upset you, nothing that can take your peace away because you want what God wants. Well, he's leading you into certain situations every day. And you know, brother, as well as I do, wherever we go, there's an opportunity to share Jesus Christ. Wherever, right? Yeah, and, and, and if you haven't shared Jesus in the last week, you better fast and pray. Don't eat until you do. We're talking with Gary Zemak, one of my good friends. Hey, Gary, where do they find your, what, what's your website again? Uh, thank you, Bear. The best place to find me online is followingthetruth.com. And right now, I'm telling you, uh, if you've had a change uh, coming up or something has happened and you want to do a Lenten series, uh, there's no better man than Gary Zemak. He tra travels all over to do uh, parish uh, renewals and uh, strongly encourage you to go to his website and uh, con connect with him there. And what's the website again? Followingthetruth.com. Amen. We'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I'm your adventure guide, Bear Wozniak. Aloha and welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I want to encourage men out there to go to my website, deepadventure.com, and join Bear's Man Cave. It's a private group. Uh, it's a private Facebook group. It's a secret group. You can't join it by going to Facebook. You have to go to our website, deepadventure.com, and then we will plug you into our private secret group, and you'll be with other men there that are like-minded as you, challenging, equipping, mobilizing, sharing their burdens, getting real with each other. And then every two or three weeks, we have a Zoom meetup, a video chat, where all the men get together and we go through one of my books as kind of an excuse just to talk. We spend an hour having cigars, a shot of whiskey maybe, and we just talk story with each other. So please go to deepadventure.com and join, uh, join Bears Man Cave. We would love to have you there. We're talking with my friend Gary Zemak, uh, who is the author of the, uh, his newest book. Is just about, is it, has it been released yet, Gary? It will be released in January. Give well, up worry the, for Lent. Give up worry for Lent. And the best yeah. part of that book is someone wrote a review or something on it. That yeah, that's right. Bear Wozniak wrote a review, and I really appreciate what you had to say, Bear. And, you know, I think so many people struggle with, what do I give up for Lent? A lot of times we, we go with the <laughs> chocolate or the sweets. You know, that's fine to sacrifice to fast. But w the, the thing with worry is, and, I you know, I speak a lot about overcoming worry, the thing with worry, it is the complete opposite of trust. I don't. I worry because I don't trust God. So can you imagine if we find a way to give up worry for Lent? And in this book, I have a daily reflection, 40 daily reflections for each day of Lent, a Bible verse, a meditation, and a concrete way to be able to give up worry or to put it another way, to trust in the Lord better. And that's what he's looking for. That's what he wants. Yeah, you know, it isn't to do a, a, this meditation for 40 days. It's to change your life. Exactly. You take the 40 exactly. days to change, to rewire the synapses rewire. in your brain. You know, yep. um, Adam and Eve, the big, the, the big, really what happened at Adam, with Adam and Eve was Satan tested them. Do you really trust God or don't you? Exactly. That's the big question. I remember I had a huge, we're speaking about detours in our life. Yeah. I had a huge detour once. I had two children. One was about to be on the way. I was working for a money center bank, a New York bank in L.A. Now, my boss flew, flew out and said, you got two choices, move to New York or we're cl closing your office here. And mm -hmm. I was living in Southern California, a surfer. There's no way I'm moving to New York. I ended up with a little bit of a, of a, of a silver streamer, enough to where I ended up starting my CPA practice. But mm -hmm. I went down to the – when I didn't really know what I was going to do, I just, just didn't, wasn't sure where I was going, I went down to the beach – Oh, yeah, I decided I was going to start my firm. I was going to go make a run at trying to start my firm. But I went down to the beach, and I so I studied tax law. But then I also 
read through the entire Bible, the New Testament, the Old Testament, and the New Testament again in a six-week period of time. Wow. And the biggest lesson I learned was this word rest. Mm. R-E-S-T. The promised land of rest. Um, God saying, uh, and the other one was to listen. You don't listen to me. They kind of go hand in hand. Uh, Paul even said, strive to enter into God's rest. Like, you're supposed to work really hard at what? At resting. <laughs> and I, and yeah. I remember at one point I thought about the R-E from the letters in rest is to recognize that God is God and, and I'm not. Yeah. It's kind of the Job thing. And then the S-T is trust. Hmm. That's, where you get, that's where you get rest. And that's where you, at some point, you're, 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 the weariness in your heart just surrenders and says, Lord, not my will, but your will be done. Yeah. What are some of the things that you talk about in your book? That that's trust is a big theme of the book, Bear, and um, you know, and and one of the biggest points that I make, whether I'm speaking or whether I'm writing about worry, about overcoming worry in our lives, is the fact that it's okay to be afraid sometimes. It doesn't mean you're less of a man. It doesn't mean there's something wrong with you. It doesn't mean you even trust God. It it it, it means you don't. Tr- it doesn't mean that you don't trust God. I should say. It's okay to be afraid, but what matters is what you do with that fear. The biggest theme for all of my books, for all of my talks, when it comes to overcoming worry, is that if you let your anxiety, if you're anxious about anything, if, you, if you're if you concerned about your family, if you're concerned about your job, if you're concerned about past sins, whatever it is, if that turns you to the Lord, if you go from fear to faith, from Anxiety to a greater trust in the Lord, you are doing exactly what you are supposed to be doing. If we look throughout the Bible, you see people like Abraham, Moses, St. Paul, the Blessed Mother, St. Joseph. They are all documented as being afraid at times. It's okay to be afraid. What's not afraid, what's not okay is when you let that fear or that lack of trust turn to worry turn to, oh no, what's going to happen? I can't do this. I can't get out of the boat. It's impossible to walk on water, right? We look at Peter. He's a fisherman. He knew knew it was impossible technically to walk on water, but he saw Jesus and he trusted. He took that step out of the boat and he learned briefly that he was able to walk on water as long as he clung to Jesus. And one of the best things about that story that I love the most is when Peter began to sink. He took his eyes off the Lord, focused on his problems, looked at the storm, and he began to sink. He reached out to Jesus, and he said, Lord, save me. And you know, Bear, Peter was so close to Jesus, because he walked over to him, that Jesus immediately reached out and grabbed him. Now, that's that's, cool. I never thought of that. Right? Right? He was almost there. and He was there. Jesus immediately lifted, so he was that close. He was that close, and that's the key for us all. We want to stay that close to Jesus every day, and then when we feel we're getting in trouble, Lord, save me, and he can grab us, right? That's the key. Yeah, I love that. You know, I was thinking about this. You know, I used to sail pretty much by myself. I had a little 27-foot Catalina out in the Ventura area. I got to the open ocean and sailed, and I was by myself because no one else was going to sail with me. Poor bear. (laughs) And so people who sail by themselves or even most sailors, they will, they will have a rope trailing out the back of their boat. Mm. And about every five feet, there's a big knot in that rope. Uh, and it goes on and on. And this has been a history of sailing for probably thousands of years. And uh, there's, a, there's a saying called the bitter end. Mm. And what that is, is that last knot on that rope. So that if you're sailing and you fall off, and you're swimming to that, and you slip, and you miss the knot, and you miss the knot, and then, then there's going to be that last knot. When you, right. when you are uh, in the boat sailing and it's a beautiful day and you're maybe on your cell phone and you're thinking about you know, buying stocks or, or what you're going to do that weekend, what football game you're going to do, or about your worries or your cares, when you fall out of the boat, you only have one thought in your mind. Grab that rope. Right. Grab that, that, right. that life, that life, uh, that life uh, rope that's extended to you. And there are some people right now that just are, are kind of right there. They're at the bitter yeah. end. Yeah. Can you just talk to those people right now that are at the end of their strength, they don't know which way to go, uh, talk to them, pray for them, those who are at the bitter end right now. Yeah, thank you for that opportunity because I know that there are people listening who are at that point. Here's what you need to remember. 
every time we, we, we see the story of the storm at sea, when Jesus stilled the storm, he was sleeping in the boat, the apostles were freaking out because the storm was active, they were panicking, they woke Jesus up, he stilled the storm. And when we look at the situation where Peter had the opportunity to get out of the boat and walk on the water, in both of those cases, Jesus set up his apostles. He knew they were going into a storm. <laughs> he set them up, right? But because, Bear, this is where our faith grows, in the storm. So if you are at that point where you're thinking, I, I'm at the end of my rope, there is no hope. Jesus has you exactly where he wants you. He wants to get you to the point where you have faith in him, where you reach out to him. It doesn't matter how you feel. You can be scared to death. It doesn't matter. What matters is that you do what Peter did and you say, Lord, save me. And one of my favorite prayers, Bear, is when I look at the divine mercy image, those words on the bottom, Jesus, I trust in you. I say, if you're at that point, say those words today. Pray those words. Pray them slowly. Repeat them. Jesus, I trust in you. And it doesn't matter how you feel. Mm. Trust is an act of the will. So make that prayer today. Jesus, I trust in you. Lord, save me. Help me, Lord, whatever it is. And then wait, wait for him to respond. He's got you. He doesn't lose battles. You know, Bear talks about we're being led into war. We're in battle every day. We got the Lord on our side. And every time throughout the pages of sacred scripture, when the Lord would say, and he said it many times, be not afraid, have no fear. He would always follow it up with, because I am with you. Mm. Doesn't matter. He is with us. That's all we need. Right, brother? Remember what St. John Paul II said, I think when he met with the youth, I think it was in Brazil. He just stood up and he just said, Coraggio. Yeah. Courage. Yeah. Be not afraid. What wonderful yeah. words. In the world you will have tribulation. That's right. But be of good cheer. Yeah. As I've overcome the world. And there is a special crown. And I think it's really for anybody who goes to heaven, gets this crown, yeah. the, overco the overcoming crowd, crown. It's the Rocky Balboa crown. It's those who uh, turned and faced the lion of adversity and trusted in God and, 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 and uh, faced it and walked through it. We're talking with our friend Gary Zemak. Why don't you give up worry for Lent? The book is called Give Up Worry for Lent, and his website is called? Followingthetruth.com. We'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Aloha and welcome. Oh, hold on a second. Someone's at the door. I'll be right back, okay? Can you give me one second, Gary? You bet. Okay, I'll be right back. Hey, hon, can I see you for a minute? Sorry, I thought Cindy was going to get it, but she's gone. Okay. Oh, no no problem. All Could right. you video me for 30 seconds? Like we got 10 minutes and 30 seconds left. Just, no, from the, like, so you can get bare on the screen but not get in the picture? It's just like stand right there or something. Oh, okay. Yeah, send us a picture of that, too. Okay, here we go. Is that your daughter? I didn't get to see. That's my wife, Eileen. Hi, Eileen. Aloha. Okay, here we go. Bear says aloha. aloha. I'm going to ask her to video a little bit, me doing yeah, the interview, uh, and I'll cool. put it up on Facebook. And you, you'll get this whole YouTube, too. You can share it. Awesome. Camera. Okay, okay, here we go. Switch to video. Aloha, and welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I'm your adventure guide, Bear Wozniak. I remember one time uh, paddling out uh, on a really big day. Uh, it was so big that basketball-sized boulders were getting bounced around a little bit by the surf. And I paddled out, and I paddled out, and I paddled out. I think I spent maybe 40 minutes or so trying to get out. 
and I just couldn't make it. And I was at the end of my strength. And then I saw the biggest set of the day coming. And I knew I couldn't get over it. I knew I was just going to have to surrender myself to that wave. And I turned and tried to paddle towards shore, which is usually your last choice. You always want to be paddling out when big sets are coming in. And I got worked. And I remember uh, as I was getting wiped out, I yelled out, Jesus! And I thought, not a good idea because now I'm not going to have any (laughs) oxygen. So I probably got out, Jesus! And then I stopped and took a deep breath. I thought about my children. And I took one of the biggest, deadliest wipeouts of my life. And I remember uh, being just tumbled around, tumbled around, tumbled around, not knowing which way was up, being like a doll in a dog's teeth being ragdolled, you know, just being thrown and whipped around, keeping my arms and uh, appendages close to my body so they wouldn't get dis- dislocated. And um, then feeling a little bit of release of the pressure, but not knowing which way was up. And uh, then seeing a little bit of light, and so f- swimming towards that light, and then another big explosion and being pushed down again. And then finally being pushed down so hard that I reached bottom. Mm. And as I felt the pressure of the wave pushing down on me it gradually subsided then i could push up but as i pushed up and i looked towards the light and you swim and you swim and you swim believe me you're not feeling any better the feeling is worse uh you're 10 feet away five feet away three feet away at three feet away your lungs are going to explode and then you but then you burst forth and all Mm -hmm. of a sudden the day is brighter the sun is when you breathe in that first gas of oxygen, it's amazing how bright the day is. And, of course, then you have to look and see if another wave's going to come and pound on you. But luckily for me, there wasn't. But there's something about that moment of confusion in your life when you've, been, when you've hit the detour where you're just being thrown abro- around. You literally don't know which way is up. Yeah. But then there comes that moment when you really reach bottom. You can push off from there. It doesn't mean you have relief yet but you have only one goal and that's to get to that pure oxygen. And that oxygen is the breath of Jesus. As we focus our life and our direction on Jesus, then everything else, uh, you know, comes into place. Even if we don't make it, maybe we're in a life and death situation mm-hmm. and we end up dying. Our focus is still on Jesus and we're going to be with him. But talk about that, 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 those, that, that time of there's, there's the worry, there's the worry and cares of the right, world. Right. But some people are really, in a real, real hurting place. And you, if anyone is, would be the right person to address this, it would be you, Gary. What, what prayer would they pray? Wow. But I'll tell you, Bear, one of the simplest prayers is, Lord, save me, or Lord, help oh, me. You know, yeah. that's, that's what he wants. That's what he wants us to do, because that's when we have the opportunity in the storm. That's when we pray more earnestly. And if you look, Bear, one of my favorite examples, if we look at how Jesus prayed on the night before he died, especially in Mark's gospel. I love this. He prayed, Abba, Father, all things are possible to you. If it be your will, take this cup of suffering away from me, but not my will, but your will be done. That's the perfect way to pray, because the first thing the Lord did, and he reminds us, is to acknowledge that God is our Father. Our Heavenly Father loves us. He loves us so much he sent his Son into the world. And Jesus taught us, call your Father Abba, call him Daddy. He loves you that much. And then he went on to say, all things are possible for you. And I recommend, you know, if we have time, not if we're in a crisis, because obviously if we're in a crisis, if it's life and death, the biggest prayer we're going to come out with is, Lord, save me. But when we have time to pray, acknowledge, Father, all things are possible to you. He doesn't need to know that. He knows that. But I need to know it. And then when I recognize my loving Father, all things are possible to him, then I can pray, Father, can you help me with this problem? However, not my will, but your will be done. That's the perfect way to pray, brother. Yeah, and you know, it's, the thing is, too, is we can't, God is not all-powerful. He can't make you love him. Right. He can't make you trust him. He can't, right. make, let your, he can't ma- make your will do what is contrary to the way he's made you. Yeah. You, know, it's, it, you have that freedom to love him back. But make no mistake about it. Yeah. God loves you. And yeah. when you and the choice isn't whether to do His will or not, the choice is whether to love Him back or not. That's oh. because God's will, because God is love. His will yeah. is love. Go ahead, you, you roll. Exactly. Oh, I'm yeah. excited because you yeah. said something. The one thing God can't do, and this is by design, 
is he can't make me trust him. And he set it up that way because he wants me to love him. He wants me to trust him. He will not do that for me. Only I. That's a gift to the Lord. I could say, Lord, I trust you. I don't like this situation. I am not happy. I am suffering. But you know what, Lord? I'm going to choose a conscious decision. I'm going to choose to trust you. And boy, the bear, that's my way of saying to the Lord, I love you, Lord. You know, the thing is, is God hides. Yeah. He hides just enough so that the person who doesn't want to find him won't. Yes. But he hides just enough so that the person who really does want to find him will. And he says, I am the rewarder of those who kind of sort of would like to find me. No, he doesn't say that. He says, I am the rewarder of those who diligently seek me. But there's a promise in there. If you seek me, I will let you find me. I know what I have in store for you. Plans for peace, mm. not destruction. A future reserved for you, full of hope. If yeah. you seek me, I will let you find me. If you seek me with all of your heart, I will let you find me. So in there, in this way that God hides from us, is an invitation to come closer to him. He's already right there. Yeah. He's knocking on the door. Yeah. He's already right there, but in that hiding is for him to say, come, come closer. It's an invitation for the That's quest. the key. Yeah. That's the key. Re Revelation 3.20, Bear, where Jesus says, I stand at the door and knock. If you open the door, if you hear my voice and open the door, I will come in and dine with you. He waits for that door to be open. He's not going to force his way into our lives, but he will constantly knock. And that's many of us who have gone through a pretty big conversion will look back and say, yeah, I heard him knocking for many years, but I didn't respond. But man, when you open that door, everything changes. You know, it's interesting. The <clears throat> Song of Solomon, you see the, 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 the man coming and knocking on uh, the woman's door. Mm. And, she's, and she says, my beloved comes to me and knocks on the door. And I say, hey, I'm already ready for bed. Don't, you know, go away. <laughs> But then as soon as he leaves, she, she kind of tosses and turns, who is, where is he whom my soul loves? And finally, she goes out into the night, and she seeks him, and she finds him. And, and God is so, the, the man who represents Jesus is so good in this. He loves yeah. her, even goes with her to her mother's house. But then, in several chapters later, and this is for those people right now who have been walking a walk with the Lord and have now have, have, have held back. Again, you see the beloved coming and knocking on the door. And she says, I'm, I'm already ready for bed. You know, don't bother me. And he leaves. But this time, the, the shepherd reaches in through the lattice and unlocks the door. Because she's already given him permission. She's already in relationship with him. He reaches in. And pure myrrh drips off his hands, the image of the cross. And he opens the door, but then he walks away. And then she runs yeah. out to follow him immediately. And she gets beat up by the watchman, the same watchman that showed her the direction to go to find him in the earlier chapters, now beat her up. And so there are those new Christians who had their first response learning to say yes to the Lord. But then there are those Christians that have gone on with the Lord and that are now drawing back. Yeah. And they feel pummeled in their life and they're confused and they wonder why. This is the Lord's invitation, the dark night yeah. of the soul. Yes. Uh, to say, do you love me because of what I can do for you? Do you love me just because when you came out last time, I went to your, not only to your house, but to your mother's house? Or do you love me for who I am? Uh, and in that dark night, it's not dark at all. It's like coming out of a movie theater into the brightest light and you're blinded. It, God's love is shining so bright, but he is demanding, do you love me, Peter? Do you mm. love me? So for those who have continued on in the Lord and now they find themselves in this confusion, it's because you drew back. But God in his tender, tender mercy is still there. But it can be a little bit of a dark night. Gary, you got to wrap it up. you got 30 seconds. Sorry, brah. All right. I feel I need to share this Bible verse, Bear, especially for anybody who is facing an uncertain future, doesn't know how it's going to turn out. Jeremiah 29, 11, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans for welfare and not for evil, to give you a future and a hope. You might not know what's coming tomorrow, but the Lord does, and he's got your back. It's going to work out. Hey, go to Gary's website. Um, what is it again? Followingthetruth.com. And his new book is? Give up worry for Lent. 
And you can go to our website, deepadventure.com, and uh, subscribe to our newsletter. We'd love it if you did. We love you guys. May the breath of the Holy Spirit aloha you. You want to do it with me? You want to say aloha to him, Gary? I'll try it. Okay. Aloha. Aloha. (laughs) Until next week. Aloha, everybody. You've been listening to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Go to bearwozniak.com to get your free audio and other exciting content. Plus, you can pick up the Long Ride Home 10-episode DVD set, autographed copies of Bear's books, Long Ride Home shirts, tanks, coffee cups, and even motorcycle pins and patches. And find out how guys can sign up for Bear's Man Cave online Facebook group, all at bearwozniak.com.